Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to build video number two of the FB Jets F-15 uh, massive aircraft. So in this video guys, we are continuing on where we left off from the last video and we are going to continue working on the hot section. So let's roll that intro and we'll dive into uh, getting this plane built. All right, guys, if, you, if this is your first time finding my channel, do me a solid, hit that subscribe button down below, give the video a thumbs up. When you do hit the subscribe button, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when new videos come out. All right, guys, so we got the turbines all mounted last time, and uh, obviously we're missing one, but uh, that's not really that important right now. But uh, we're moving on to continue the hot section in this video. So what does that mean? That basically means that by the end of this video, we wanna have the pipes mounted in the plane we want to have everything completed for the hot section i would like to have the cones mounted in the plane as well and have all that stuff figured out we may get some other things done in the meantime but that is going to be the focus of this video uh, we finished the rudders last video right over there and uh, we do need to put the linkages on but not super critical not very uh overly technical either you're just basically centering it and putting the the linkage on so but we're gonna get to the hot section of this plane and uh, try and accomplish this in this video so thanks guys for tuning in and uh, enjoy all right guys so I'm a fan of using rivets to put my pipes together to the bell mouth because they tighten up they work and they're not gonna come loose if you do ever need to get them off you just drill them out and they come off versus using bolts and lock uh, nuts because if you're using a nylon lock nut there's a chance that it's gonna get hot and uh, it's gonna come loose. So these holes are just a little bit too small for the rivets to fit through. So the rivets we're actually using are 1 8 inch steel medium rivets. So that's what we're actually using to put this together. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to drill these out. So I'm gonna use a uh, appropriate size drill bit. I'm gonna drill one hole out and put it in and then continue all the way around. Now I have spent some time working with these pipes, just going around and basically um, kind of marking out the, the best fit. The holes don't line up quite perfect, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of adjustment, but uh, that's all par for the course. So I'm gonna put those pipes together. It's been a while since we had tip time, guys, but uh, here's tip time for you. Okay, so bellmouth has been installed. Now there's a couple important points here. Right now, the bottom of your screen is the bottom of the aircraft. So if you're using smoke on an aircraft, you wanna have that joint in the pipe towards the top. Uh, because if you get smoke oil leaking out and it sits in the bottom of your pipe, and that joint is in the bottom of your fuselage, you'll get smoke oil leaking in your fuselage. So that's number one little tip for you. And then we put the aluminum bracket, so the kit came with two of those, probably for the single pipe, but we put that on the bottom of the pipe because that's gonna allow us to have one fastening point uh, for the pipe. And then we're also probably gonna have a fastening point on the cone itself. So the pipe will be fastened, the bell mouth will be fastened, and it will be nice and solid. So that cone's done. We're going to do the exact same thing, or that pipe, and we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other pipe. All right guys, so first step to getting these pipes installed is to do the back end first. Uh, once the back end's done, then you can take and adjust the front of the pipe to get that positioned over the turbine. So what we need to do is install the pipe in the tail cone. Now I've measured this distance all the way around the pipe and we are exactly centered. Now these former pieces they put in there they're actually a little bit oblong shaped and I think they might do that so you can um, line them up to one anyways that's what I'm thinking so this is actually the one part of the former here that is the right size and the rest of them are too big so what I've done is I've just gone and marked around that pipe with my paint marker and there you can see the difference in the shape right so we've got a shorter lip longer lip and then it changes as it goes around. So what we need to do now is sand this with the Dremel and we want to be leaving the white line plus a little bit 
and we want a pretty nice snug fit because this is what's supporting the back end of the pipe. Okay, so next thing to figure out guys, now that we've got that one fitting, is what type of scenario do we go through to get the engine pipe tail cone on and off? So the easiest way to mount these tail cones would be to snug them up against the fuselage and put some screws through this area. But we want to go a little bit better. So what I've done is the pipe is in this side or the left side of the fuselage. The cone is just sitting there. And I was just making sure that we could get the pipe in and out with the engine removed, which it looks like we will be able to do. So, so that problem is solved. That's an important one because if you start doing something like this and you figure out that you can't get the pipe in because whatever, it, it's obviously you're gonna have to go back to the drawing board. Now, the reason I know that is because I've been there before. So it's kind of a crappy situation because these flanges are so far back from anything here. So if we want to do anything with this, we basically have to make a mount here, make a mount here, and have it all line up properly. Okay, so I need to give this some thought, and I will, uh, I'll update you guys with my solution that I come up with. All right, guys, so I think what I'm going to do for the tail cone mounting is I have mounted or installed the tail cones like this. I made sure that there's a label sticking upwards and the thrust lights there are somewhere near the bottom. So we can run those through the little gap in the light and then we will install those on the bottom and tape them with foil tape, like heat protective foil tape stuff as they go back into the fuselage. So I've done that for both sides. I've gone in and marked three of the bumps or formers. So one's at the six o'clock, one's at the uh, like 1 32 o'clock, and one's over there at about 10, 11 o'clock. So then what I did was I installed the tail cone on the fuselage. And we made marks associated with where those formers for the tail cone line up. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to, as a first step, I think this might be enough, but we're gonna take this um, half inch uh, aircraft ply. I like to uh, buy a small piece of this stuff, like a, a eight inch by one foot kind of size, and cut it up into these small blocks, which are very useful for mounting plates and things like that. And uh, so we're gonna use them in this, in this situation. So we're gonna high saw three of those in the associated marks and that's gonna give us some nice stuff to screw into. So my thinking is we drill a hole through this former right here and we just use a screw that screws into this half inch piece of ply and then through the former in the fuselage. And I think that's going to be an easy and extremely solid way of mounting the tail cones. So as a last step tonight, I'm gonna to get these installed, glued in with high saw, and we will uh, leave them be until tomorrow, and we'll see what we can uh, progress with. All right, guys, it is the next day, and our blocks are nice and solid, and they worked out good. Ah, yes, my hand. Uh, if you've got daughters, I've got three of them, and you know that stuff like that kind of happens uh, when you have, uh, have daughters, so, if you see in this video, my lovely little tattoo sparkly thing, it's uh, courtesy of my lovely children. All right, so the owner is on his way to work on the plane with me. And uh, have you ever heard that story about charging more, the mechanic charging more if you wanna watch him do the job? Um, so he was supposed to pick up some number four or number six two inch screws. We need two inch screws to fasten the exhaust cones onto the aircraft. So they need to be at least two inches long. So 
I asked them to bring some, but that's gonna be the next step as we're gonna drill holes through the blocks that I glued in to fasten the exhaust cones on. All right, guys, in preparation for mounting these tail cones, uh, first thing I did here was create a hole right on the side of the blocking. That's for the thrust light wire to run through right there. And we are going to uh, line those all the wires with the uh, snakeskin material. So what happens is inside the cone here, I also took my Dremel and I Dremeled out the former in the cone and then just used my X-Acto to cut the rubber off of the, uh, the tail light here. And so we can fill this with goop just to protect the wires or hot glue will work as well too, but goop's probably better. And then what we do is we just use the silver foil tape and we will tape this down to the inside of the cone. And then the wire just runs through the hole right here. And then we've got the snakeskin material starting from this point, going all the way to the, uh, near the front there where it, uh, where the controller is going to be. So that's uh, that step done and uh, just waiting on those screws still. And then once those screws are here, then we will actually mount the cones. All right, guys, the interior or internal mounting worked out amazing. So we had to end up using two and a half inch screws to make the gap there, but it worked out just beautifully. So it threads into the wood block by about the full length. So it's probably threaded in there half inch because the two inch screws just started to thread in. So we've got three screws holding that in place and it is very, very solid. So it's not going anywhere and then much better than having the external screws. So we're gonna get this one installed. And then once that one's installed, we're gonna pull both engines out get the pipes installed, and then we can start working on mounting or lining up the front part of the, uh, the pipes. All right, guys, so we got one of the pipes installed and worked out absolutely beautifully. Uh, it's uh, really, really happy with the way this all worked out. So that's what the front end looks like. Um, not, not a whole lot to see there. But then if we look at the back end, basically with the pipe in the rough center position, we've got a nice gap around the, uh, the light, which is nice and even all the way and turbines down the pipe there. So the next thing we need to do is the little angle that we riveted onto the pipe, we need to come up with a mounting system for this. So a couple different ideas here. Tank. This is one of the Carf bubble tank holders that uh, works for the bubble tanks that come with the CARF airplanes. So this is my first thought that I had is if we cut this, we can use this piece here for the mounting point. And it may not work, but we had this sitting around, so let's try and use it. And uh, that might work, might give us enough space. I think there's about half an inch to three quarters of an inch from the bottom of the fuselage to that L bracket. So this might work out just perfect. So we're gonna do a bit of measuring with this and see if we can make this, uh, this piece work. But that's the next step is we're just gonna do one turbine at a time so we have access to that area. And once we get everything lined up, then we can uh, mount everything for that turbine and then we'll work on the other one. All right, guys, you can see our, maybe, oh, there we go. You can see our adapter underneath the angle bracket. So it worked out beautifully to use that piece of wood. And all we did was, I'm gonna zoom in on it and you can see the black Sharpie marks. So we got it all lined up in the plane and then stuck a Sharpie in there, marked it out. So it was nice and spot on. Ooh. And I'll try and give you a decent shot here. There's a shot from the back end. So I think we need to go down just a little bit still. So we'll pull the pipe out and give that a bit more of an adjustment, but really, really close. So what we're gonna do in this case is we're gonna get the this pipe done, we're gonna get this pipe done, 
get them both lined up and then we will glue them in at the same time. We don't want to be gluing this pipe in, trying to work around this pipe and bump it out of place. So um, the gluing will be the last thing we do tonight just because uh, we don't want it to move. All right guys, so we've got both of our pipes lined up and they are spaced up and down perfectly. Now when we do glue these in, we'll be, that we'll be at that point doing the side to side. And once all that's done, then we'll see if we need to do any other further mounting with them. So before we glue these pipes in, we wanna be um, running our wires. So that's the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run the wires along here. We're gonna line this with foil tape inside the, the exhaust cone. And then we'll have some snakeskin material coming through the hole over top of the wire and that's gonna chase the wire all the way forward. And we will go to the right hand side of the fuselage to get away from the heat. And we're gonna do that on both of the, uh, the tail lights. All right, guys, so we have covered the wire with the foil tape, the 3M foil tape. And the snake skin hat starts right there and goes all the way towards the front of the airplane. If you look far off in the distance, you can see it way down there. Uh, the other thing I've done is one of these clips to hold the bundle of wires. That's installed just out of view right to the right hand side there. So the afterburner light line goes into that uh, cable holder and then also we'll have our rudder cables go in there, our elevator cables and everything go in there just to keep everything away from the pipe. So we need to do a couple things now. We need to put some goop on that wire to protect it on both sides. And the other thing we need to do is put some goop on our clip because the, the adhesive on there is good, but it's not that good. So what I like to do with this is this is installed in the plane like that, and I'll just put a little bit of goop around the edges where I can, and that prevents that from coming off. So I'm gonna do that stuff next, and then we're good. All right, guys, lines are all run. Chad brought up a good question. We're mounting the pipes now. When we mount the pipes, how do we run all the lines and all that kind of stuff? So the pipes going in, the primary point of this is just to get our base mounted in the fuselage. Once our pipes are mounted, this piece is glued, then what's gonna happen is we're gonna have to pull the pipes back out again, but then we can undo the bolt and bring the pipes back out and then do our other stuff. But the primary purpose is to get this piece firmly mounted in the airframe. So the plan for this is we're gonna get both pipes installed, positioned. Before we put the pipes in, we're gonna give the bottom of the fuselage a bit of a light sanding. And we're actually gonna bolt the turbines in place, get everything 100% mounted, and let it cure overnight. So this is the last thing we're doing tonight. So it can sit uh, untouched, and by tomorrow it will be solid and glued and permanent. All right, guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some high saw on the back of this nut, basically creating our own blind nut that is better than a blind nut, because blind nuts suck. So put a little bit of lubricant on the threads, so if we get any um, epoxy on the threads, it doesn't stick, and then we just wrap the nut in high saw. Of course, using trusty bent screwdriver because that is clearly the best tool for this job. So now when we take the pipe out, all we need to do is loosen off the Allen bolt on the front and it will come off and the nut will hopefully stay put. Okay guys, so the pipes have been put in place. We do, we are gonna have to go back and do a little bit of gluing if you look on that mount. Uh, it's positioned well and everything. It just, uh, it will need some, some extra adhesive put underneath. But the primary thing is we wanna make sure that the position of the pipe to the turbine is 100%. It is right now up and down, side to side and it's gonna cure nice and solid, and then we'll go back and fill that in afterwards. This side is nice and flush with the base. And if you look in the back side, I know I've shown you this a few times, but we are centered up and down, side to side, 
And on that one, we are centered up and down and side to side. So, so good, successful evening, getting some important things done. This was in this uh, FB Jets kit, probably the most complex part. I think that's what you said too, Chad. Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, it's probably, well, and it's a critical part as well too, but it's probably the most complex part because it's not just bolt it in and get it done and the, there's really not instructions to tell you how to do it. So you kind of have to figure it out. So definitely the hardest part I would say of this kit. The rest of it is just gonna be running, putting together, sorting, figuring things out. So we're gonna let this cure and we will continue working on the FB Jets F15 tomorrow. All right, guys, it is the next day and everything has cured nicely. So the pipes are solid. Now, the one thing, because there's only a single bolt in that bottom mounting system, the pipes can actually rotate right now. And that's why we do need to install a secondary mounting system. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these engines out. The pipes are in the right spot right now, but they can be moved. So we just need to be careful and that's the next step is we'll pull the engines out and we'll see what we're gonna do with the secondary mounting system for the pipes. So just a little tip or consideration to think about when mounting a pipe in this situation. So um, you don't wanna just have the pipe mounted to the skin. You wanna have the pipe mounted to the former work, the engine rails, and the reason for that is those things are permanently shaped, permanently mounted. The skin, and this jet is not a great example, but uh, the skin is flexible. You know, usually on the, on the especially, especially on the underside, uh, there's quite a bit of flex. One of my previous planes, I had a yellow aircraft F-15, so a smaller model than this, but it was built insanely light. Uh, when you went to go pick up the aircraft, you needed to make sure that you actually had your hands on the former work, because if you had it on the, the skin of the airplane, uh, you could easily uh, damage it or, or push through. It was very, very delicate. And so that's just something to consider when, when uh, thinking about how you're gonna mount pipes in a turbine aircraft. All right, guys, working on the pipe mounting. So if you look right below the turbine right there, you can see the wooden block that we were talking about. So we've got one mounted on the top side of the aircraft or the, uh, the carbon bell mouth there and one on the bottom. So now what we're gonna do now that the pipes are nice and centered again is drill through the carbon into the half inch wood block and that will be our pipe mounting. Okay guys, couple little tips here. So if you're building one of these planes or any FB jet, um, the bearings were very, very dry. So we put a little bit of bearing lube on there and made a huge difference. They're actually rotating, not grinding. So just check that because they've got metal cages or metal seals on them. You can just put lube on the, the seal itself and it'll work its way in. So we did that to both of them and they work much better. And there's a quick shot of the underside up close. Lots of detail. Gosh. <laughs> okay guys, pipes are mounted and they are amazingly uh, solid. Um, honestly, probably if, if we were doing this again, probably don't need that one on the metal pipe, but the reason to do that one is you're connected to the metal pipe. Now we're also connected to the carbon bell mouth. So really we've got two kind of uh, mounting points or layers of protection and it is extremely solid. The other benefit to doing that first one there is to get the right height and everything before you worry about fastening these in. So, But uh, really happy with the pipe mounting. Worked out good. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we are moving on to the elevator servos. So we're going to flip the plane upside down and we're going to uh, figure out what the heck we're doing with the uh, the elevators. Okay guys, couple things here. Um, the setup we're using on this plane is a direct drive setup. So if you've watched the SkyMaster F-18 build, very, very similar setup. But the only difference is we've got the servo arm sitting inside the plane and the shaft coming out. The SkyMaster, the servo arm sat on the outside of the plane with a cover that went over. 
which also works, but I, I think I like this setup better. We'll find out at the end once we've uh, actually installed it. But it looks like uh, everything is going to work really, really well. Uh, the linkages all came, or the, the direct drive setup all came pre-made. And the way this works is that lock nut right there essentially sits in this channel and travels with the servo. You've got your double bearing setup, which sits in the receiver portion of the elevator or horizontal stab, if you like that better. And uh, this is what drives the surface itself. So it looks like it should work fairly well. And next step is we're just going to clean this channel up a little bit. We've got a little bit of the filler material from when they uh, made the plane pretty. And so we're gonna clean that up a little bit so this travels throughout that channel, no problem. And then we'll work on the servo setup and we've got some metal carriers for the servos to, uh, to mount, so. All right guys, so for the elevator servos, we were going to use these, which are awesome. But the downside here is if you were to draw a straight line, through the output shaft of the elevator, through, like if you were to draw a straight line all the way through the center of the servo, that basically should be one nice straight line. So the problem is if you use this cage, it lifts the servo up a little bit. And if you draw that line straight across, your servo output shaft, instead of being roughly here, is now up the thickness of the plate. So we couldn't use this. So fortunately I had some metal brackets from a, I think this is from one of my Carf Ultra Flashes from the elevator. And we are going to use these. So we got those mounted on the servo. The servo's mocked up and we have installed the output shaft on the servo. Now, the one thing is these servos are a little bit big. It could be the carbon plate because it's sitting at an angle, a, just a slight angle to it. So the output shaft right now is just above that center line. So it's going to work fine. But what that means is for now, what we need to do is open up this backside of the top portion or the this is the underside of the plane and the front side of this section to get that arc that the output shaft travels in to work properly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna Dremel these, it's not much, half to, to one millimeter, Dremel that, and we'll see how that works. And then what we can do after this step is install the actual elevator, the surface itself, have it plug on to the shaft, and we will see and make sure that everything works. All right, guys, we got everything mounted on the elevator and it worked out, I think, really, really well. So you may find with a direct linkage setup, you still will have a little bit of play, but this is a really, really nice setup. Very, very little play and it worked out really, really well. So I'm quite happy with the results here. Now, the one thing they talk about on some of the build threads, I believe, is your center point is two inches up from this ridge right here. So we are essentially centered with that servo and with the surface. And the other thing to note is the actual uh, half circle slot that the servo uh, output shaft moves through really only allows your, your recommended surface. So up elevator, and keep in mind that the plane is upside down right now. Up elevator is two inches and that bottoms out in the, uh, in the slot. And then same thing, other direction but worked out absolutely awesome. So a couple important points here is, bent screwdriver, we need your help. The, uh, you can see the bolt right there. So the servo arm is pretty much butted up against the skin, just shy of that. We've got both bearings inserted in the receiver portion of the surface. So it's nice and solid contact and uh, everything worked out good. We did have to open up that channel a little bit forward and that was part of the reason that before we bolted the servo in we wanted to double check that because that receiver channel is only so long. 
So we kind of planned on having the servo shifted all the way backwards, but that channel didn't allow the servo to sit all the way backwards, it had to sit forward. So we did have to open up a little bit on the lower portion of the front or leading edge of that channel, but uh, worked out good. So while we were holding this in place, drilled two holes, we still have to drill our other two holes and, and finish mounting all this stuff. And uh, that will be awesome. Loctite, Loctite, Loctite. So when we did the mock-up for the servo mounting, we didn't use any Loctite because we were just getting everything mocked up. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that servo out and make sure we Loctite everything in place and we're happy with everything. And then when we actually bolt down the, the servo, we'll use CA on the, the wood and everything. And that is the right thing to use. And just in case you're wondering, we're using red Loctite on our bolts, right? Yes. Why? Because I don't want them to come up. <laughs> so our servo output shaft, we did uh, use Loctite, the servo pinch bolts, and we're gonna use red Loctite on the, the mounting bolts and everything. Now, if you do use red Loctite and you need to get it off, it's very simple. You just put some heat on it and that will um, soften the Loctite and you can get it off. So just a little tip. Tip time for you, second one in the video. All right, guys, we found one of our kind of first big er problems. Uh, the bearing blocks in the back here, there's four bolts holding everything together. So you've got a, an Allen key bolt go that goes through and you've got a nut on the other side. So you really don't have access to the bottom ones at all. Uh, we do have access to this side because it's still clean. This side has a bunch of epoxy all over it. But basically what you're looking at is there's we noticed this because there was play in the elevator if you wiggle the elevator this way so what happens is you can actually see the 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 plate here not fastened down to the the former piece a hundred percent so it's not going to pick it up on camera but um maybe you can hear the movement just give me a second So that, that ticking noise or clicking noise that you heard, that was the, uh, the bearing block moving. So we've got a couple options. Um, the worst thing would be to have to cut the, the pointy end of this thing open from the top to allow you access to the, the, the bolt heads. Um, the other thing they did is on this side they encase the the whole block in epoxy here but when you wiggle this side to side and you may be able to see this if you look in this area right there you'll see it change color because the actual block is loose so that's another option as well too is we can try and expose this head right here to tighten this one down we can grind out some of the epoxy here and redo it so it's tight. And uh, that should take care of our issue, but we do not have any good access to the top or this side uh, for that Allen key head. So not entirely sure what we're gonna do. We're probably gonna grind this out and re-epoxy it, but uh, just giving that some thought right now. Well guys, that's it for this episode. We uh, got uh, a lot accomplished in this episode. Um, we got some big problems though to deal with with those elevators. So that's gonna be what we start with the next episode in. But uh, in this episode, we got uh, the hot section finished up. We got the uh, elevator installation started, figured out, and uh, basically complete on that one elevator side, the uh, left elevator. And um, yeah, so lots of good progress in this video. And uh, thanks for tuning into the videos, guys. Thanks for joining me in the build of the FIBO, FIBEO, uh, FB Jets, F15. So good start to the build. Definitely the most complicated things sorted out. And the most complicated two things when you're building a jet like this, as we've talked about, is number one, the pipe mounting and the hot section. Number two is the direct connection elevator setups. Those are 
hands down the hardest things to deal with. We've got a couple other things like the uh, the air brake operation, switching it over to electric, the canopy and things like that, but we've got some good solutions in the works. So that's it guys, thanks for tuning in. We will see you in the next video. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and if this is your first time, when you hit that subscribe button, or if you're a regular subscriber, don't forget to hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. We will see you in the next episode, guys. Thank you.